Basically, just to give you the, the, the bold facts, or the bald facts, is uh, Baldwin's essay, Stranger in the Village, was written in 1953. It's a moment when he is in Switzerland working on a novel. He's staying at the chalet of his French lover's family in this tiny mountain village. Um, and he says, at the beginning of the essay, for many of the villagers, he's the first black person they've ever seen. And so the essay goes on to talk about what it means to be a stranger uh, in that context, but also Baldwin thinking about his relationship to European culture, a culture that he says the villagers inherit, but he has an estranged relationship to. He's talking about Europe's colonies in Africa. Uh, he ends up in the essay thinking a lot about what does it mean to for many of the villagers that he is this embodiment of the other. You know, they don't understand that he's American because in their heads Americans are white, so he must be African. Um, they're marveling at his skin color, his hair texture, uh, he's gone to this village over several summers because he says that there's nothing to do there and it's cheap. Um, he says that his typewriter, this is also 1953, pre-internet, you know, his typewriter is an invention his next door neighbor has never seen. So, um, so him really thinking in an essay, which is only about 10 pages or so, about big, broad, panoramic vistas as Baldwin always, Baldwin was trained as a preacher, a uh, boy preacher, and you see that in his writing, you know, these paragraph long sentences, and very beautifully written, uh, and very dense and weighty. And so, initially when I started working with the essay, the, the idea was to make paintings that had some kind of visual equivalent to the density, the breadth, the majesty of Baldwin's words, but also uh, because I'm always interested in abstraction. Um, I am a painter who started their training as being very interested in abstract expressionism. That's kind of where I started. So I'm always interested in the specificity of the text I'm using, but also bringing that text to a sort of abstraction through the repetition of writing, of layering, the letters of the essay, the individual words, over and over again in oil sticks, so they become this kind of dense and abstraction. And I think for me, you know, um, this is not my words, these are other people's words, but they're useful to, you know, it's about, in some ways, the idea of language and its failure, uh, the subjects that Baldwin is trying to make clear in this essay, you know, race, colonialism, they're too big. And so it's about the sort of inability of language to hold the meaning that it's got a hold in this 10 pages to explain everything. Uh, for instance, one of the things that's not explained in that essay is the fact that Baldwin is there in the chalet of his lover. So that is not part of the essay, though he deals with these other very large themes. Um, so I'm always interested in this sort of difficulty of reading too, so that's, you know, by stenciling letters, the text gets more and more dense and more abstract, so it becomes hard to read. So part of the work has always been about this uh, back and forth between legibility and illegibility, meaning and non-meaning. But in, the rec in recent paintings, I think I've become more interested in Graham mentioned before, aesthetic writing, or artists who use writing systems that look like writing, but have no kind of content as such, or content that's very private. And so I've been looking a lot at that, thinking more about my roots in abstraction. Um, I was just invited to do a banner for uh, the Metropolitan Opera's premiere of the opera X, Life and Times of Malcolm X. 
And so you can look at it online. There's a banner at that with a big giant X in the middle of a field of dates. And I think that started me thinking about this work in particular and the idea of the X. You know, Malcolm X's original name was Malcolm Little. He changes to X in order to get away from the associations of, you know, the family name which comes from plantation owner's name. Oh, that's black American history in general. Our names come from ownership and the legacy of slavery and white supremacy. So he substitutes his last name with the X. So the X has a very particular political meaning in a sense, but the X is also like, you know, when you used to type things and you didn't want to wipe them out, you just X through them. You know, to redact a text, to correct a mistake, to hide something. And so that the idea of the X and putting it over this Baldwin text, so the entire text of the essay is in these nine diptychs. And then I just started here and started Xing them out. Um, but, you know, I am a lazy conceptualist. I shouldn't say that because that'll go in some articles. <laughs> um, <laughs> What I mean is that uh, the normal, uh, my normal approach to making a series like this is to figure out a system and execute it. So very influenced by somebody like, you know, Saul Lewitt, who has a kind of system, sets out its parameters, and the work is executed. But um, he does that by giving instructions. So assistants make that work, you can make that work. So, but I'm interested in like these systems of, but also I'm interested when they break down, where they fall apart. So the first painting here started pretty simply, like I have an X, it's a certain font size. I just X out where the words are. So from the, from all available evidence, no black man has, so I'm following the spacing and the logic of a, the text that's underneath there when I'm mixing it up. But over time, it becomes more idiosyncratic.